Look at this. See that? And there. This took four years. It took me four years to hatch these tortoises. I'm going to do something that I would never recommend doing otherwise. This is a wild caught Libyan tortoise, folks. Unfortunately, this tortoise, the rest of her group, and all the other thousands and thousands of them, they collect as many as they possibly can to make as much money as they possibly can. They just don't care for them. All it takes is one sick animal to infect thousands more. It's really like that. We're gonna get real. Oh, there's two. <laughs> there's two going. Oh my God. Look at this. See that? And there. This took four years. It took me four years to hatch these tortoises. It has been such a journey the last four years and we're finally here. It's finally happening. Look at his little face right there. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take these two babies, they're pipping from their, from their eggs, I'm gonna put them on a moist paper towel in this closed deli container, put these two back, let them hatch in their own time. They have not started yet, but we've got some work to do on those two and I'm gonna show you right now. I'm going to do something that I would never recommend doing otherwise. These are sterilized tweezers and I'm going to actually help this baby out of its egg. And the reason for that is because we've had so many issues trying to successfully hatch this species. So normally, no, do not do this. Let the animal hatch on its own. What's more important here is that we end up with healthy, live baby Libyan tortoises. So very carefully here, I'm doing this. Now this baby is ready to come out because it did pip on its own. So it used the egg tooth or caruncle on the end of the snout to pierce the egg itself, which tells us, okay, I'm ready. Time for me to enter this big crazy world. But what we've had are actual hatching failures where the baby dies inside the egg, right as it's about to come out. The reason that we've had issues with them is really kind of unknown and that could be because there are environmental parameters or situations going on that are affecting the babies from naturally hatching and you know this is a species that comes from Libya so much different environment out there so you know there's probably environmental triggers that happen that get these babies to come out uh, of course Libya is a very dry region but there is rainfall so these animals may very well be timed with that to hatch and that's why they can hatch easily or at least not die inside the egg oh my gosh this thing is stunning it is absolutely oh hello how are you <laughs> Let me get that little piece off you there. Come on. Now, you know, these, these tortoises are barely studied, if at all, in their native range. And really what happens is they're just collected and sent over for the pet trade. And, you know, everybody just thinks, oh, it's a Greek tortoise. It's a Spurthi tortoise. That's it. Mm -mm. This animal is nothing like the more commonly seen Greek tortoises, like the Ibera Greek for example, that comes from Turkey, an animal that experiences all four seasons, goes through a cold winter. Wow, guys, look at this. Look at its bold color already. And that's how you know it's a Libyan, because this animal is by far the most easily recognizable specimen or subspecies within the Testudo Graeca species complex. Again, that's the Greek or Spurthi tortoises. Come on, little one, let's get you out. I think this is just about all I wanna do, just to make sure that I can get out. You know, with aquatic turtles, they're known to drown inside the egg for whatever reason. And I think that maybe somewhat of what's going on with these, even though I don't add any water or anything, it's just really a poorly understood situation, a poorly understood species. And we're learning as much as we can as we go on. But this took me four years, guys, four years. I can't believe it. Hi, look at you. So one thing you can really notice with this baby that I've shown you with other babies in the past is that tortoises are actually folded in half in the egg. So 
I'm trying to get a good close look at this baby, but look at that, see that? It's folded right in half. That's how it fits in there. So as this baby develops throughout its incubation period, and these eggs were laid on September 6th. So, you know, close to 90 days incubation for them. As it grows, it gets too big to fit inside the egg. So what happens is the animal folds in half. And the reason it's able to do that is because the shell is not bone yet. It's keratin and cartilage. But once the baby straightens out, it starts getting exposed to UVB lighting, eating a proper diet and going about its life. As it grows and grows and grows, it will harden. And by the time it's an adult, the shell will be fully solid bone with the keratin scoots on top and the animal will be way less vulnerable to predation at that point. Right now, this animal is perfect little snack bite size for a wide variety of predators. So of course it's gonna be raised indoors. Plus we're going into winter, so it's way too cold for a Libyan tortoise outside. But before this little one hurts itself, it looks perfect. I'm gonna put it back on this moist paper towel. Oh, do you really wanna come out, huh? Okay, all right, hello, look at that. You can really see it now, guys. And again, I, I just gotta throw it out there. Don't do this. Let the baby hatch on its own. I'm gonna tell you so many reasons why this was such a hard task for us and why this was the best option for these particular babies in a little bit, but let's help get its sibling out of the egg first. All right, baby number two. And if all goes well, the other two fertile eggs will start pipping maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day and we can get them safely out too. Because yeah, I just don't know guys, I don't know why several of them would fail inside the egg, but I said, okay, enough is enough. We can't chance this anymore. Now let's get these babies out. And unfortunately it would happen when I didn't even realize it would happen overnight or when we were out for a day or two traveling and you know, all of a sudden we would come back to an egg that didn't look right. And sure enough, there was a deceased, fully formed baby inside but not this time. Look at this, another gorgeous, gorgeous Libyan. Oh man, I am just so filled with excitement. So this one, not as quite far along as its sibling. And the reason I could tell that is, you see that red area there? It's still got quite a bit of its yolk sac. So I'm just gonna help it out enough so that it, you know, can breathe well, there's no chance of anything happening with it, and we're gonna let it sit in the egg like this, but it is at least out, exposed to the air, just enough. So the reasons why you should not do this, typically, is because if the baby's not ready to come out yet, you can tear its yolk sac. It can cause other injury to it, or the baby may not be strong enough to right itself. It could flip over, um, but that's why I didn't go much further with this one. That one's definitely ready to take on the world. You saw how quickly it jumped right into my fingers. Uh, so we'll give this one a little bit longer, but I'm gonna be on these things 24-7, uh, making sure that they fully emerge as well as watching their the other babies. You know, guys, they may have been able to hatch just fine on their own, but I didn't wanna take a chance with it because of just this really bad track record with the species as a whole. And every time we would even get a fertile egg, it was like, oh my gosh, they're fertile, we're gonna hatch one, and then boom, it wouldn't happen. And now here we are, four years later, getting two, possibly four. I think we're gonna get all four. I'm gonna hold out uh, some serious positivity there. Okay, now I told you guys I was gonna tell you why this was a big deal. So now that the cutesy part is over, we're gonna get real. This is mom, amazing, right? Mom is a beautiful representative of our group of Libyan tortoises. The reason that it was so hard and so heartbreaking to go through this for the last four years with this species is because of what the species initially goes through to come over to our country and any other country they've been exported to, because that's the case. They have been exported. This is a wild caught Libyan tortoise, folks. Unfortunately, this tortoise, the rest of her group, and all the other thousands and thousands of them that made it to the pet trade were collected or taken from markets. So maybe in some cases they were saved from either being eaten or something else, but they don't belong here. They belong in Libya, but they are here. And we have a group of them at Garden State Tortoise. And let me tell you, there used to be more of them because when these animals come in, they are already heavily compromised. And the reason for that is because the exporters, unfortunately, don't really care for the animals well-being. What they do is they collect as many as they possibly can to make as much money as they possibly can. And while they're holding them as paperwork gets put together to export them legally, they just don't care for them. They're fed lettuce, tomatoes, all things that they should not be eating. And they are basically defecating and urinating all over each other. So all it takes is one... I have poop right in front of me. 
<laughs> That's some talking about hygiene. There you go. That is that is healthy poop, though, and this is not what it looks like when they first come in. Don't worry. We sanitize all this stuff before another animal comes into the picture. But my point is, all it takes is one sick animal to infect thousands more. It's really like that. And these animals can carry some very deadly diseases. Not so much for us, but when it comes to other reptiles, particularly other tortoises, especially their own kind. So these animals can carry herpes viruses. That's not the same as what it is in humans. Picornaviruses, ranaviruses, intranuclear coccidiosis. These things are lethal, many of which there is no cure for. The symptoms can just be managed. Something like a mycoplasma is actually a breath of fresh air when it comes to these animals because they will still live long, normal lives. and even be reproductive, they just need to be kept away from other animals that are not mycoplasma positive. That's a disease that presents itself in respiratory. We won't get into that. A mom, lucky for us, has always been healthy. Some of the other members of her group have always been healthy, but a lot of them weren't. Some of which are still with us, some of which are absolutely not. These poor things come in half the weight that they're supposed to be. They don't recognize food items over here, even some natural weeds. They're riddled with all kinds of parasites, and they have to go through so much just to get them in a spot where they're comfortable enough to eat. And these animals, although they are not large, they are, you know, eight inches is big for one, they should feel like a brick in your hand. And they absolutely do not. They're so light. They lose their beautiful head muscles. They just look pathetic. Sunken in eyes, diarrhea. It's really a sad situation. So we had to go through the process of acclimating this group, dealing with the animals that unfortunately were just not healthy enough to survive. But then on top of it, we had to get them to adjust to life here in New Jersey. South Jersey, where we are, it's actually very very favorable for a wide variety of tortoises. They can spend from March all the way until November outside, depending on how the spring or summer is going to behave in a given year. But with these animals, there are other things that can affect them, like heavy rainfall. So we had to figure out how can we reconstruct these outdoor areas so that they can be with the sun and experience a day-night cycle, which is beneficial to them no matter what, but keep them healthy. But they needed expansive pens with proper substrate that would drain well for when it does rain. Low-lying shrubs so that they could stay out of each other's way because something you guys need to take into consideration, and this goes for zoos, captive keepers, rehabbers, everything. When animals are kept together, especially tortoises, just because you don't see aggression going on does not mean the animals are not simply stressed out at the sheer sight of each other. Visual barriers help the animals stay stress-free, or at least at very low minimum stress. If you can make the animals comfortable to where they're not stressing out, you have already crossed a major, major line in helping to make the animals survive long term because stress is the number one killer of Libyan tortoises and any other tortoise species. Over time, they began behaving as a group, which was wonderful because these tortoises do occur in colonies and they would basically live in harmony. And we noticed a major improvement with them. There were still losses along the way. And unfortunately with these exotic, poorly understood testudo species and other turtle and tortoise species, it's hard to understand when something is going south. And more often than not, it's too late when you do notice that something is going on. Lucky for us, the vast majority of the group is still with us. But then the next round of problems came in and that was reproduction. These tortoises would lay eggs and I would get so excited over it. I would videotape it, photograph it, get the eggs right into incubation and even study Libyan parameters to see what do these eggs actually require. Sometimes they would be fertile, many times they would not. No fertility whatsoever. Okay, not that big of a deal, right? Maybe the animals still aren't fully settled in. Because remember, a wild caught animal like this that does not belong where it's at is going to take an exceptionally long time to settle in. But four years is a lot. And when we did get fertile eggs, a couple different things would happen. The eggs would start developing and then immediately go bad, or they would go full term and die within the egg right before hatching. They would never even get to pip where they start breaking through the egg. So it was just like devastation after devastation with such a beautiful species that needs to be produced and propagated in captivity. We need assurance colonies of these animals because if we can't stop poaching in Libya and we can't stop you know, environmental issues happening with hydrology or habitat encroachment, all kinds of destruction and pollution, we can at least produce these animals under responsible captive situations so that they will be around for years to come. And that's my goal for these babies. I wanna see them in an assurance situation. An assurance colony is when these animals have a chance to build in a captive situation by making sure they are not genetically related and that they are spread out to the right 
people so that they can do the right things with them. And that helps ensure the preservation of the species because absolutely not can these animals go back to the wild. It is illegal. Libya does not want them. There is no legal way to do it. Once these animals leave their native lands, they are essentially considered tainted. I know that is sad to hear. And believe me, if Casey and I had the option to get these tortoises or any tortoise we reproduce here back to nature, it would have been done already. You guys would have seen a ton of videos about that. It's just not within our reach. Maybe yeah. things will change one day, but as of right now, it's not. However, you have seen what we're doing with the genetic research in rewilding box turtles. So it's a start. Hasn't happened yet, but we're on that trajectory to hopefully get box turtles back to the wild. And who knows, maybe one day these Libyans, their babies will be able to go back to the wild. So that's why it's so important that we just keep precise records and do everything on the up and up to make sure that the species is preserved. Because right now, folks, these animals are all over reptile classified pages and they're not even properly identified. Because what happens is dealers will just simply dub an animal based on where it's coming out of. And that's because exporters will use other countries to get the animals legally out of a country. So even though these animals were taken from Libya, they can use Tunisia or Egypt or somewhere else to get them out of the country and into the pet trade. It is a mess. But let's not leave off on a negative situation. We've got baby Libyans for the first time in four years. So far, they seem healthy. We've got two more on the way, and I hope that, that this mother and the rest of the females in her group keep producing, and we can work closely with our friends that are doing the same thing with them. There, there are so many people not hatching this species and not giving them the attention they need because they've become disposable pets over the years. So. High note, we are leaving off on a high note. We've got baby Libyan tortoises. They are beautiful, they are healthy, the adults are still healthy, and it is a sign of hope for the future to come. But I really wanna leave you guys off on a high note, so I've got one more thing to show you. Hey Otis, come on, come check it out. All right, ready guys? Are you ready? Back by popular demand is the exclusive Otis plush. That's right, we teamed up with Makeship again because so many of you guys asked for us to bring this awesome plush back and here it is. It is ready to go, it is live now guys for you to get it, so the link is in the description. For you, it's for you to head on over there and get your very own Otis plush. These two campaigns, Otis and Rockalina, have been so amazing. You guys have been so supportive with all of it, and now it is back. It went on sale Black Friday, and it is now your chance one more time to get this awesome plush designed by us and makeshift of the one and only Otis, the very famous, very awesome. Eastern box turtle. So hit that link in the description. One more time, your chance to get the Otis exclusive plush. Thank you guys so much for the support and enjoy.